Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Alejandra and today I'm going to show you how we are going to separate the information from this column into two columns. I want to split the container's name or container's number and another column with the dates. I show you how to solve this with Power Query in my last tutorial. I'm going to leave the link to that video on the description of this tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how we are going to solve this with Excel or with Excel functions. So let's start. So let me start by hiding these two columns here. And here on cell I2, I'm going to show you the function sequence, equal sequence. And what this function is going to return is a sequence of numbers. I'm going to press tab here, and this function has three parameters as optional and one mandatory parameter. The parameter for rows is mandatory, and you can see that the other parameters have square brackets. That means that uh, they are optional. The rows, I'm going to provide 10. Let's see. So for default, this function is going to start from number one, and it's going to add steps of one. That's why you see one, two, three, up to 10. Let's say I want to add comma. I want to add the second parameter. I want to add three columns. I press enter. Now you can see that you have three columns with 10 rows, and it goes from number one to number 30. Let's say I don't want columns. I only want rows. Well, I can skip that parameter by providing comma, no providing any information, only providing the comma. I leave that parameter empty, let's say. And I'm, I want to start from number five, and I want to add steps of two, let's say. I'm going to press Enter. I have only one column, and I start from number five, and I have my steps of two. Five plus two, seven plus two, nine, and so on and so forth. This is very basic uh, for what sequence can do but we're going to combine it with other functions and you will see how wonderful this is going to be. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to start here, say equal index. I want to bring the information that is in my column original. So I'm going to provide the array. The array will be the content of my column from row three to row 20. And because this is a table, I have the table name here and I have the um, column name in square brackets. And I do this with tables because every time that I add information to this column, it will be added to the table. So my formulas here are gonna bring that information as well. So I don't have to be changing ranges or anything like that. So now I need to provide the row numbers. And for that, I'm gonna use the sequence function. So I say sequence. I need to provide the rows. So the rows will be this many rows divided by two. I don't need as many. I want to split this information from this column into two, two columns. For that reason, I don't need as many rows. I need half of those rows. So, so I'm going to say count A. Count. I want to count all the cells that are not empty. So I need to provide the values again from row three to row 20. That is the number of cells that I want to count. Close parenthesis for the count A, and I want to divide that by two. That's all that I need, comma. And let's say I want to provide the columns. I need two columns, one column for the container and one column for the date. So I'm going to provide number two here for the sequence function. Close parenthesis for sequence, close parenthesis for index, and I'm going to press enter. And now I have the containers in one column and the date in another column. You can see we have numbers, but that is just formatting. Uh, so I'm going to select this column, right click, and select format cells, or I can just select this column, um, press Control one and I have the format cells box here. And I want to uh, transform this into date. I'm gonna say, okay. And now I have my dates properly uh, presented here. Now I'm missing the titles, let's say. Here I'm gonna say equal. I'm gonna provide uh, an array. So for that reason, I provide the curly brackets. I'm gonna provide the names that I want inside of that uh, 
array, I want to say this is going to be container, container or container name if you prefer. Close quotation marks for that and comma. And the next column is going to be called date. Close um, quotation marks, close curly brackets, press enter. By doing this, now I have the names of my columns right here. What I can do to combine this array with this array, I can use the vstack function. I have a video on that, so I'm gonna put that in the comments as well, so you can see uh, with more detail what the function vstack does. In general, here I'm gonna show you very quickly. I'm gonna say vstack, and um, vstack is only available in Microsoft 365. The function sequence is available in Microsoft 365 and Excel 2021. Um, both are available in Excel for the web. So just be aware of that. And what it, this is gonna do is gonna stack two arrays or more. In my case, I have one array here on cell L2. Just to tell Excel that this is an array, I'm just gonna provide the hashtag so you can see that immediately selected all the content of that um, array. If I don't have that hashtag, it refers only to that cell. Um, I'm gonna do that and comma. And in this case, for the other array, I can do I2 and I can provide the hashtag as well. And it recognizes that it's an array. If I don't want to do, if I don't want to provide that hashtag, I can just select the content of that array and Excel recognizes that it's an array and adds that hashtag, right? So I'm gonna close parentheses, I'm gonna press enter. And now you see that both arrays are together. So I don't want to do it in the, like this. I just wanted to show you how this function works. So here on my function, um, actually, let me copy this, this part here, because I'm gonna put together with our other um, array. So I'm gonna edit F2 to edit, and here, after the equal, I'm gonna see a free stack, and I want to provide the first array, right? So it's asking me for array one, array two. Control V to paste. That is my first array, comma. And my second array will be my function index. And here, let me separate a little bit this. So it's a little bit better or easier to read. You can also uh, press Alt Enter and you can put this information. Maybe let's say you want to move the index. So Alt Enter, and you can put this in a, in, in a better order, let's say. So you can do that as well. And so I'm gonna go to the end, and I'm gonna close the parentheses for V stack, and I'm gonna press Enter. So I can just delete whatever I had over here. And now my final result has the titles, Control P, and just for the titles, I can go to home and I can just have this over here. Yeah, just the borders here. But now let's say I want to add two more containers here on container nine. I'm gonna select the container and the date and I'm gonna drag that, let's say for two more. So I have container nine, 10 and 11. And yeah, now you can see that here we have that updated up immediately. Let's say I want to delete from container A to container 11. I'm going to delete all this information, control minus to delete. Now you can see that our information goes up to container 7 only. I hope you found this information useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me in LinkedIn and also share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.